Welcome to the Southern Craft Wood Shop. I'm Wes Lewis. Today we're going to build a drying rack and this is a project I've been wanting to get to for quite a while now. It'll allow me to stack 60 cabinet doors or shelves to dry and it'll save me a considerable amount of space as well. So the first cuts that we'll make will be the plywood that we need for our mast and our base section of the drying rack. Our drawings call for the use of 3 quarter inch plywood and this actually comes in at about 11 sixteenths so we'll make that adjustment over at the table saw. So to get our mass to finish out at 12 inches square, we'll need four rips at 11 and 5 sixteenths. Before we do that, I want to start off by ripping a sheet of plywood directly down the middle. Now we'll adjust our fence to 11 and 5 sixteenths. We'll be sure to run our side that we just cut against the fence, leaving the factory edge as the drop. We'll need two rips at 16 inches for our base assembly, but first I want to set my fence up at 16 and a quarter, and then we'll come back and trim that rip down to 16 inches, removing the factory edge. We'll set our 16 inch rips to the side for now, and we'll go back to working on our mast section of the project. We'll come over to the miter saw to trim our four 11 and 5 16 rips down to length. We'll start by making a dust cut, and then we'll slide down to the bump stop set at 80 inches to make our second cut. So we'll need four braces to go on the inside of our mast, and we'll get those from the drops from the 80 inch cuts that we just made. So now that we have all of the parts cut for our mast, I want to come back over to the table saw and work on the pieces that we need to make up our base. We're going to start by taking our 16 inch rips, bringing them over to the cross cut sled, and we're going to square up two ends of a five foot piece. Now we'll have a three foot drop left over that we'll set to the side. We'll come back to that in just a minute. Now we're going to take one of our 16 inch rips that we've cut down approximately to five feet and we're going to use our paperwork to lay out one of the legs then we'll lay out the other three from that pattern. So I've got a shooting board that I had laying around that I am going to cut this angle with. And I'll set that on the line and I'm just going to attach it with a couple inch and a quarter screws put a couple of scraps underneath it so my blade doesn't cut into my table and check the depth raise that up just a hair and we'll make the cut With all of our angles done, we need to make one more cut to finish out the length, and we'll do that over at the miter saw. Now we want to take the belt sander and knock these two corners on the top side of our angle cut down just a little bit, and I've got them on the drawing as a one inch radius. That's not really critical, I just really want to round it over just a little bit, and while I've got the belt sander, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the burning that I got from our skill saw. Now we'll take our orbital sander and we'll just ease the edge on the top, the angle, and the nose on both sides, but we're not going to worry with the bottom or the back. Earlier we set two drops from our 16 inch rips over to the side. It's time to bring those back over to the table saw. We're going to set up at three and a half inches and we're going to get eight rips out of that. We'll go over to the miter saw and cut them to length. We're ready to start the assembly process for the mast and the base portion of this project, and I want to start with the leg assemblies. We'll take the rips that we just made, and I'm going to double them up, flushing them on the bottom and the front and back of each leg.
we'll set our leg assemblies over to the side and we'll bring over one of the four rips that make up our mast. And I need to lay out for the braces that go on the inside. And I'm gonna come off the end 26 and 3 8 on both ends. and I'll set that brace to the inside of that line. Now I'm gonna take this piece and use it as our template to mark the other three. Now I'm gonna use a couple of clamps to hold up two of the rips that make up our mast. Now I'm only gonna be making up one joint at the moment and that'll be the piece closest to me. This other rip is just there to hold up the top piece until we get the joint put together. I'll run a bead of glue down the edge, bring over another rip. And I'm going to work from one end to the other, keeping this outside edge flush. And I've changed my brads from the inch and a quarters I used earlier over to two inch. Now we want to pre-drill a series of holes down the entire length, about every eight to 10 inches. And I'll follow that up with two inch screws. Before we go any further, I wanna go ahead and start putting our internal braces in. Now we'll run a bead of glue on two edges of our braces. But right this second, we're only gonna shoot one side. And we'll put the brace on the X side of the line. All right, now we want to rotate our part. And we'll shoot from the other side. Now we're gonna rotate back to our original position and we will glue, shoot, and screw both the edges and the braces as we go. And for our last panel, we need to be able to get glue on two edges, both this outside edge and the edge closest to us. We'll do that by putting glue directly on the panel itself. All right, that takes care of our mast. Now we wanna move over to the base portion of the assembly. And we're gonna start by bringing the end off the edge of the table. Now we're gonna bring one of our leg assemblies over and we will set it flush to the bottom and the back side. We'll mark it, we'll glue, tack it in place with a couple of brads. Then we'll use four inch and a quarter screws and two three inch screws to permanently fix it. Now we'll rotate and repeat that same process for the other three sides. Now the last piece that we'll put on the base will be a piece of three quarter inch by three and a half inch plywood that we measured to fit. And that'll give us a wide enough footprint for our caster. And we'll glue this in place. Flush it to the front nose. and shoot it with two inch brads. And to finish off the base, I'm gonna screw on some four inch casters. And I'm gonna come about a quarter inch off the end and split the difference 
and I'm just going to screw those on with an inch and a quarter washer head. Now with our base and mast assembly put together, we can start working on our slats. For my drying rack, I'm going to use southern yellow pine for the slats, and I'm going to get those out of 1x12s. I've already gone over to the miter saw and cut them down to length. Now I'm going to come over to the table saw and change out our blade from an ATB to a dedicated rip blade. Then I'll set my fence at 2 inches and we'll make our cuts. I'm going to need 60 of these pieces, so I'll cut a couple of extra. It's going to take a minute, but I'll be right back. Well, it took a little while, but now we have all of our slats cut. Then we went over to the miter saw, put a 45 degree cut on the bottom edge, and we spent some time sanding just to knock the sharp edges off and to get any burrs that might be on there off of there as well. Now we can go ahead and start installing these onto our mast. Our slats will extend out 16 inches out past each side of the mast. And to simplify the spacing, I went ahead and I cut a 16 inch spacer that we'll use as we go. Now we'll prep each one of our slats over at the table before coming over to the mast to install it. And for our first one, we're going to flush it up with the top, button it over to our spacer. And we'll shoot about six brads into it. Remove the spacer. Then we'll go around to the other side and put the next piece on. Now we'll alternate to the sides. We still want to butt to the side of the mass. And we're also going to butt up to the bottom of the slat above. And every couple of courses, we're going to want to check to make sure we're staying square. Well, that's going to wrap us up today. If you would like to build this project, you can download the plans in the blog section at the southerncraftwoodshop.com or I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching.